Um, so you go pretty far back with uh, Bradley Beal. Uh, you guys were McDonald's All-Americans together. And also um, you played with Spencer, I understand, in Detroit, right? Um, uh, uh, man, not really. Got a, a couple games with him, but not as much as I would hope. But you know, okay. I, I did play with him in Detroit, yes. Okay, well, what's it like to, to reunite with those guys here? Um, I think it's going to be – it's a great feeling for me, you know, uh, as far as, like, me and Brad, you know, uh, he's one of my close friends, my best friend. You know, we uh been knowing each other since we were 15. Um, so, you know, that, that relationship is already there, you know, and it's going to be fun just to, you know, just play with a friend, you know, and – uh also just be be living in DC, right? You know, where he's at, you know, and then Spencer, you know, uh just to get the opportunity to play with him like uh that I didn't get in Detroit, you know, and then just seeing him grow over the years, you know, his season that he had in Brooklyn, you know, uh I'm 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 excited. And um you uh were able to adapt to different roles in LA. Um, you know, fewer shots but shot a higher percentage. Um what has allowed you to kind of adapt to different roles throughout your career, particularly in LA? Um, I mean, just being there with just just going coming to an organization and, and just um just accepting my role. Man, I, I had to learn learn that you know the, the four years I was there, and then when Brian, AD, and all of them came, you know, I I had to kind of figure out what my what my role were my my role was, and just try to perfect it, you know, and to try to stay even, even kill with, you know, knowing that, you know, we have AD and Brown, which the, it was ball dominant, you know, and just being prepared, you know, ready to shoot, play defense, you know, what I built my career off of. Right. Hey, Contavious. Um, how, I'm just curious from, uh, ex, bless you, from a, uh, from an X's nose standpoint, just on court stuff. How do you see yourself fitting in with this group? I mean, I see, you know, a bunch of young guys, you know, that's hungry, you know, that's going to compete um, every night. You know, um, I just see myself fitting in with that. You know, um, that's that's my type of game, my type, my, my style game, you know, hard work, hard work, you know, playing defense, you know, mainly that's first, you know, and, um, you know, just scoring the ball, shooting the ball. You know, I see myself fitting in well, you know, just coming in, you know, um, as a leader, you know, off a championship team, you know, try to bring that that, that type, you know, DNA and that that style over to D.C., you know, uh, and, and try to try to lead that way. And and this, this team for a while, kind of one of the things that they've been looking for is kind of a guy, a wing who's able to defend well on the perimeter and, and then be able to knock down threes on the other end. Um, d defensively, what what do you feel like are your strengths, and and what do you feel like you can kind of infuse into into the defense? Um, I mean, I feel like my, my strength is, is is being able to, you know, guard from one to three. You know, if 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 that's the, if that's the job that need to be done, um, you know, uh, I I just feel like that's that's that's, that's just pretty much guarding one, two, three. You know, uh, I can. You no, know, we can. It's a lot that we can do there. You know, uh, and I feel like the team that we have is it, can be defensive minded. You know, uh, and, and and I feel like we can we can we can have a chance. You know, to do a lot this year. Thanks, man. Kareem. Hey, Xavier. It's Kareem from the Washington Post. Uh, welcome, man. Thank you. I wanted to ask, you know, you're you're a vet. You've been on teams and seen, you know, teams get constructed and deconstructed. What's what's the challenge of coming in with a team that's kind of brought a bunch of new guys in together, but also, like you said, have some young guys that they've been driving over the last couple of years, and you know Brad, obviously. What's the challenge of kind of getting all of that to mesh as quickly as possible? Because obviously guys like you, and Brad have, you know, high expectations um, and want to speed up that pro process as quick as possible. Um, I, I feel like just the more the more we can do things as a team, you know, um, no matter what it is, on and off the court, 
You know, I feel like um, we 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 can we can create that chemistry as, as fast as we wanted to. You know, um, and it's, it's just all about just just spending that time with each other. You know, getting to know one each other because it's all new players. You know, some some guys are already there that know each other. You know, um, we got well, we got five six guys coming in, new guys coming in. You know, the more we can hang around each other, get to know each other. Uh, and do things together. I mean, I feel like we can, we can make that chemistry happen faster than we wanted to. Um, you mentioned you and Brad being boys from uh, 15. Have you got a chance to talk to them since then, since uh, this has happened? And, and what was that conversation like, or what kind of insight did he give you? Um, I mean, we talked pretty much, you know, I wouldn't say, I mean, pretty much every day since, since then, you know, uh, since, since the trade happened. You know, you know, he's excited, I'm excited, you know. I, like we both on the same page that we, we we think you know we can we can make something happen this year with the team that we have you know we we have a lot of guys that's 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 dog that's gonna get after it you know that's gonna compete and I and I feel like they you know they all will buy into you know the game plan or you know what coach will want you know you know even Brad's putting his input in it you know I feel like we all will buy into that. And just one last one, quick one from me. Hey, do you have a feeling of what your role will kind of shake out being, or is that something that will happen as you guys get together and 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 find out how you guys, you know, play all together or things like that? Um, I don't know. I have no idea. You know, uh, just going going into a new organization. You know, you, you never know what what what's your role going to be. You know, uh, just all as far as just just getting there. You know, getting around the guys. You know, practicing, and then just going from there. Cool, cool. Appreciate you. Thank you. Matt. Thank you, Davis. Uh, just curious, what if, what was it about you and Brad at 15 that clicked so well? Like, did you guys bond over something or what was it? Um, I mean, it was just conversations with us. You know, uh, I feel like every, you know, I would say even through AAU, every like tournament or you know, uh, McDonald America. You would say we we was at joint brand classic together. You know, any camp that we was invited to. You know, I feel like we we always we always communicated at every camp. You know, we talked every day. You know, you know since then. You know, we've just been been friends since then. You know, um, yeah. I, I just feel like our commu- like we just grew. You know, together as far as our communication. You know, just getting to know each other. You know, um, and then just being able to. You know, traveled with through uh with, through AAU. You know, get to see him in camps and stuff. Uh, and you know, we just became friends. <laughs> and I wanted to ask about um, Montrez Harrell too. Just what was it like playing with him last year, and how did you see him kind of deal with? You know, you guys had that three center rotation in uh, LA. How did you think he handled that? And um, I mean, uh, Trez is, is Trez is a monster. You know, you you can you can see it when he plays. You know, he's very passionate when he plays, you know. Um, uh, I feel like the, the situation he was in in L.A., you know, with the three bigs, you know, it, it was tough on him. You know, that would be tough on anybody, you know, knowing your caliber of play, you know, knowing that, you know, the team could use you and, and you're still not getting the, the type of minutes or, you know, the playing time that you want. You know, I understand, like, what he was going through then. But um, I feel, for me, I feel like he handled it, you know, as as, as best as he could. Um, and you know, right now I, I feel like he's 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 happy. You know, he has an opportunity, you know, to to try to come in, you know, and, and get the you know the type of minutes or play that he wants. Thank you, Neil. Hey, Contavious, Neil the Law Hoop District. Welcome to DC. You you said you talked a lot to Brad. I'm curious. Who else you've been able to communicate within the organization to start, you know, get your footing and understanding of things? I know, you know, the five of you that new guys that are brought in, you know, had the little powwow a few days ago. Any conversations yeah, was, about to happen to get to know each other better? Um, no, um, we just really just you know was was just talking about the move, you know, the um, you know, what we what we can do, you know, uh, you know what they see us doing, like. Throughout the season, you know, it was just a bunch of talk about the future, you know, and what we we see ourselves doing. Um, and I, I I enjoyed it, you know. It was all laughing, giggles, and everything. You know, everybody's like comfortable around each other. You know, just knowing each other throughout the league. 
Um, and I, I just feel like it's, it's going to be good, you know, just, you know, the chemistry is it, going to, it's going to work fast. You know, it's going to build fast. And, you know, as long as we keep communicating, you know, with each other and, and, and it doesn't matter what, what happens on the court and off the court, you know, as long as we stay together, anything is possible. Could you expand a little bit on, you, you were saying, you know, the chemistry is going to go as fast as you guys want it to go. When you guys are all, you know, in town, say September, you know, leading up to training camp, what are the things of a good team to really get that going ASAP? Um, and knowing just knowing we're going to be around each other, um, you know, doing training camp, you know, start just like doing team team things, you know, we go, you know, bowling, you know, dinners, you know, just 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 things we can do together, you know, that everybody, you know, is invited to, you know, uh show up, you show up. If not, you know, we 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 want to just try to get everybody involved, you know, you know, we want everybody, you know, opinions and like we just talk amongst each other, you know, the more we can talk, you know, player coach ourselves, you know, and uh, hold each other accountable. But through, through anything, you know, I mean, you know, you, you become strong that way. And like dinners, bowling, no, no matter what it is, you know, outside of, 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 of basketball, we you know we, we should do as a team, you know, um, and I feel like that, that'll work. Appreciate it. Christos. Uh, hey, guys, hope you're doing well. How hungry and how motivated, you mentioned before the hungry young, young players in the roster. So how hungry and how motivated you are about uh, this season and how optimistic you are about the potential of that group? It, it kind of broke up a little bit. I couldn't, couldn't hear the question. You hear me? Uh, the, the question kind of broke up a little bit. You was in and out. Okay. Hello? How, how hungry and motivated you are for next season, for this season with the Wizards, and how optimistic you are about the potential of that group. Um, I'm, for myself, I'm I'm very you know hungry. You know I'm ready. Um, I feel like this is an opportunity you know to to do something you know in DC. You know uh, with the, with the guys that we have, you know just bring in you know the caliber guys that we we did bring in. Um, I feel like that, you know this is, we still can make noise. You know, uh, so at the end of the day, you know, we we, we can push for the, the playoffs. And also, we still have a play-in tournament, you know, where we, we still can be, you know, right there. Uh, but I see a lot of potential in our team. You know, like I explained, you know, we got a lot of guys that 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 wants to compete, you know, that wants to play, uh, that I feel like it's going to play the right way. Um, and it's just going to be fun and, 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 and great to be a part of. Troy. You're on mute. You're on mute. Oh, welcome to Chocolate City, uh, Contavious. Um, I just wanted to know, uh, since you've been in the league for, you know, pushing almost a decade right now, what do you think about the designation of three and D players? And do you consider yourself one of the elite three and D players in the NBA? Uh, I think we don't see much. Mo, mo, we don't see a lot of three and D guys, you know. And I feel like that's, you know, that's, you know, that's kept me in the league almost a decade. You know, uh, just being able to play defense and being able to shoot the ball. You know, I, I think we don't see a, enough of it. You know, I, I wish it, it it was that, but, um, yeah, I. Uh, to answer, do you consider yourself to be one of the elite three and D players? Because uh, you know, I I feel like a lot of uh, you know people who evaluate trades and such. They when when you came here, you know, one of the things they were saying is the Wizards are getting an elite three and D player. Yeah, I see myself as elite three and D. You know, I I'm very underrated at that. You know, uh, I don't get a lot of buzz around that. You know, but um, you know that, that's how I built my career. You know, starting from Detroit. You know, being able to play defense, you know, being able to guard the best players on the floor, you know, and then also being able to knock down the shot. So, you know, I perfected that, like, <laughs> throughout my whole career. You know, now I feel like I have an opportunity to show a little bit more of my game, 
and also continue to keep that 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 three and D pressure. When welcome to DC KCP. Um, I wanted to ask you real quick about one of your former teammates who's really going viral every day in the offseason and Isaiah Thomas just dropped 81 points in the summer league. That's one of your guys. Do you believe he deserves a shot in the NBA? And kind of can you talk about watching his journey from, you know, going to the highest highs, now being out the league and trying to get back in the NBA now? Uh, uh, yeah, man, IT is my guy. You know, I, I love him. I, I, I've been watching his journey since since he's been, you know, since he's been out of the league, you know, and, it, and it's, it's incredible, incredible, you know, uh, just watching them play, you know, scoring 81s and 60-something, you know, it, it, it's just fun to see him play. You know, I, I played with him in L.A., you know, it, and it was fun to watch him play. Um, but, yeah, I, I think he does deserve it, you know, for what he's been through, you know, the, what he brought to uh organization when he did play for him. Um, and I think he's healthy, and I, and I think he's ready to to, to show that, you know, and, and the opportunity. Uh, I think he really deserved that opportunity. And also, you being a vet, being in the league for a long time, what do you think is the biggest thing you can pass down to some of these young guys on the roster for not only, you know, to contribute, but to stay around and continue to be productive throughout their careers in the league? Uh, well, I always say, tell myself, you know, just, you know, to motivate myself, I always just say, you know, it's always going to be 60 to 120 guys coming in the league. You know what I'm saying? That should motivate anybody, you know, that, that, that someone's coming in and take your spot or whatever, you know. And I know uh, my thing I should, I would say, just always be ready, you know, you know, never want you no know, like you know, never want to not be ready. Always be ready. You know, continue to pre pre perfect your game. You know, you know, and always play the right way. You know, I feel like playing the right way will help a lot. Of, it, it, everybody win when you play the right way. So, you know, always play the right way. Hard work, stay motivated, and, and always be ready. Just wanted to ask. You know, it's been kind of a whirlwind two years for you. You know, what was what was your reaction kind of when you heard about the trade and, you know, what has it kind of been like for you just kind of, you know, coming off that big season at the end of 2020 and, you know, kind of, you know, the, the challenges that you went through last season and almost getting a little bit of a restart here? Um, I mean, honestly, man, I've known, uh, you know, I've been trading this league once before, uh, whether – on the heads came out and told me that I wasn't going to be in the trade. And when the trade went through, I was in the trade, man. So ever since then, I've known in this league that, you know, everybody's kind of expendable in this league. Um, nobody kind of really, you know, writes where they're, you know, going to go or their own destiny. Uh, I was on a couple guys in this league that does that. Um, so I knew that, um, you know, for a long time now. So it's no surprise to me. Um, as far as, uh, you know, the, you know, not playing or anything or the crazy, uh, and then towards the season, um, I mean, I really don't have any control over that, man. I, I just, you know, went to work and basically just did my job and, you know, did what I was asked to do, um, you know, as opposed to, you know, why it wasn't, you know, this or that. You know, I don't really have any say on that, man. But, you know, it just, you know, I, I feel that, you know, I'm, I'm healthy. Um, you know, I didn't, you know, put any extra miles on my body. And, you know, I get to go into a whole new situation with, you know, a group of great guys and, you know, a group of, you know, guys that's willing to work and get better. And, you know, we got a young group of guys and we signed some pieces. So, um, you know, I think we're going to be, uh, you know, a very exciting team to watch and a team that's going to, you know, shock a lot of people. And that was going to be my follow-up, you know, a, a, a roster that's kind of, you know, had a lot of, um, you know, got a lot of young guys kind of been reconstructed during this off season. It, just what have been your observations and how do you envision your fit um, with this kind of retooled roster? Uh, honestly, I mean, it's going to be a learning process for all of us. Um, you know, we have a new coach, um, new staff that's still getting into place, um, you know, guys that new signing, new roles. So, um, you know, the only person that's really, uh, you know, basically a uh, repeat guy um, who's basically been a staple of this team is, is Brad. And that's who we're going to look to um, to lead our group. That's who we're going to look to as the leader of our group to, you know, be the head of our snake. Um, and I think he's, you know, Shows night in and night out um, with his work ethic and the things that he does on and off the court um, that he's willing to, you know, step into that role. So 
Um, we're going to lean on, lean on him, but at the same time, we're going to also help him um, because it's going to be a new learning process for everybody. I mean, this is, like I said, a whole new coach is not coming into a situation where you have a previous coach um, from last year. So, you know, guys can kind of tell you how he wants his system. You know, it's brand new. Well, cool. Appreciate your welcome again. Yes, sir. Thank you. Chase. Um, hey, man, welcome to D.C. Chase Hughes, NBC Sports. Um, you, you've always been known as a high effort guy. Um, you know, last year you, you were um, up at the top of the league and, and taking charges. W where does that sort of gritty, dirty work mentality come from um, that has kind of defined your career? Uh, where I'm at right now, at home in North Carolina, uh, where I'm born and raised, man. Uh, you know, this is a tough environment to kind of make it out of. We don't have many people that kind of, you know, make it out of our area and, and you know, doing really anything. Um, you know, I'm blessed and fortunate to be able to make it out of this area to play a game that I love um, in uh, basketball. And, you know, we, like I said, it's a small amount of people that have made it out here. You know, Phil Force went down this area, um, Todd Gurley. But, I mean, that's, you know, after, after it hits that mark, it's pretty much it, man. And, you know, I learned from, you know, a long time and just seeing my family, um, you know, struggle through the situations of growing up day-to-day uh, -day life struggles, man. I didn't want that for my family uh, for the rest of our life, and I didn't want that for my family. So um, it's just, you know, being around this area, man, it, it teaches you uh, to, you know, it'll build character, to build, um, you know, work ethic, to build, you know, the drive and the will to, you know, want to make it out or, it'll, you know, swallow you whole. And, you know, I just went to work and just did the thing that I love to do and, you know, like I said, I'm blessed to be able to call it my job. And um, you've obviously um, improved a lot as a player since you came into the league. What, what, what's kind of next for you? What do you hope to tap into in terms of your, your development as a player? Everything, man. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't been an all-star in, in this league, you know, since I've been here, man. So I, I feel like I have a lot of untapped talents, man. Um, you know, I haven't, um, you know, been to NBA Finals, man. I haven't, you know, won the NBA Championship. There's a lot of things that I want to do as a player, man. So it's a lot of untapped, um, you know, marks that, you know, I still feel that I can reach. Um, you know, me as a player, I get, you know, look at each season, man. It's not something that I have to talk about during the man. Each season that I've been in this league, my stats, my work that um, the things that I do in this game has gradually improved each year, man. And, you know, y'all guys are the one that do is the stats and the analysts, man. You you take a look at it for yourself, man. So, you know, it's just a testament to my work ethic. Like I said, it's a testament to where I'm from and being in this area. So, you know, I'm I'm right back to it. Um, now, as you can see, I'm back home working, man. So it's it's just you know all I know. Um, so I'm just gonna continue to get better at my game. Like I said, I'm blessed to be able to play this game and call it my job. So why not continue to get better at it? Why not continue to grow and you know prosper in it? It's something I love doing. Right. Hey man, welcome to DC. Uh, Fred Katz from the Athletic. Uh, I'm, I'm good, thanks. Um, you guys have have three centers who are all good players who will command you know rotation minutes in a lot of places. Um, you know, once Thomas Bryant is obviously healthy with you and TB and and Gafford, how how do you see that situation working itself out? And and what do you imagine practices are going to be like when you have three guys who are we're all guys you throw into a rotation, you know, we're going to contribute. I mean, honestly, I, I can't really, uh, you know, give any answers towards that because I'm not on the staff to, you know, control the minutes of, you know, these guys who's going to play where. Um, you know, I can only, you know, talk about me. Um, and, you know, like I said, I think there's going to be a group that's, you know, guys are ready to compete, ready to learn, ready to get better. Um, so as far as practice, I think it's going to be, you know, a uh, constant battle every day, um, but it's going to be one in the right direction to, pushing the group to get better. Um, as far as, you know, my role, um, you know, I, I've only had a chance to talk with Coach uh, a little bit, um, but he kind of sees me playing the four or five role. So, you know, like I said, man, I'm just looking to come in here, um, get better at my game and, you know, do everything I can to help, uh, you know, put this team in position to, you know, not only make the playoff, but shock a whole lot of people. Because, I mean, you, you can look at any conversation uh, from, you know, anything that's happened throughout this, you know, trade process and everybody feels like, you know, we're already, you know, out of the conversation, so. And and you've always been a, a really uh, kind of devastating pick and roll player. And you and Lou Williams were great together and all that. Uh, wh wh what do you feel like, um, or how do you feel like that will work with with Beal and, and Dinwiddie and, and what do you like about, 
about uh, you know those guys as pick and roll partners? Um, I mean, honestly, man, I feel like I'm a good pick and roll player with anybody, man. Because when you got high caliber guys that I have been in pick and rolls with, man, they make your job a lot easier. I've been in pick and rolls with James Harden, Kawhi Leonard, um, Lou Williams, uh, you know, and it's multiple different ways people want picks done. It's multiple different ways that they have multiple uh, different scores. So. I've been in with, uh, I mean, I've been picking up LeBron James. I mean, I've been with some of the game's best, man, and all of them are different type of players. So, you know, I feel like it's not really more so um, a hard thing for me, man. It's just really understanding what these guys are looking for once they come off the pick and roll. And, you know, if I do a great job of getting those guys open consistently, then, you know, obviously the coverage is going to have to change, and then that's when I start to reap the uh, reward. But, you know, the, the main mind uh, – Mind focus, the mindset and goal, once you want to set a pick roll, is to get the guy with the ball open. So, you know, once you do that, uh, not to that 10, it's a lot easier for you. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Neil. Hey, Montrez. Neil, the Law Hoop District. Welcome to DC. How are you doing? Thank you. Entering your, you know, eighth season in the league, what are some of the advice you might give the younger centers on this team, Daniel Gafford and Thomas Bryant, to help their careers and their trajectories? Um, I mean, honestly, uh, you know, just continue to keep working, uh, continue to keep grinding, getting better, um, and, you know, enjoy every process. I mean, everybody's process is going to be different. I think that's probably one of the main things I'll probably say to um, any, you know, young player in this league, man, it's just – you know, enjoy the process and, and, you know, try to be a sponge and learn as much as you can. But uh, everybody's process is going to be a, um, a different one. Um, you know, as far as uh, any other encouraging roles, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm going to have to show it, honestly, brother, because I'm in that same position where I'm still out here competing uh, for my job as well, man. So, but as far as, like, being a, a you know, vet, I don't really see myself as a vet. I mean, years-wise in this game, uh, it kind of says it, but, you know, I feel like I'm still just just, you know, I'm 27. I'm just as young as these guys, man. So I can't really be too much of a, a bet overall. Um, is how I look at it. Yeah, fair enough. In terms of, you know, there's a lot of new pieces coming together for this team. You guys will, I'm sure, get together, you know, before training camp as that ramps up. What do you see as the most important part of creating a good team dynamic early in the season? Um, I mean, making sure that we're, you know, tied together as a group. I think that's going to be the most uh, main focus point that we are going to need um, early on because, like I said, it's not going to be just a learning uh, process for the, you know, guys on the floor. It's a learning process for the coaches as well, man, because we're, you know, coming together as a whole new group, everybody, really. So it's definitely going to be a learning process for everybody. So, um, you know, overall in the organization, um, you know, guys on the floor, coaching staff in general, we're really just going to have to uh, do it together, really. Appreciate it. Welcome again. Thank you. Matt. Yeah. Hey, Trez. Um, just curious, you know, you had an opportunity to kind of pick your next destination if you would have opted out. So I guess just why did you opt into your contract? Because then you were traded. Was it just the salary or were there other factors as well? Like, I mean, if you want to talk about that, brother, you can you know, reach out to my agent, Rich Barr. I mean, if you want to talk about some as far as this, you know, basketball or what I'm planning on doing for the Wizards, I mean, we can talk that. But as far as my contract, brother, uh, I got an agent in Rich Paul. I mean, I'm pretty sure you know who he is. You can reach out to him and, you know, we can furthermore discuss that. Sure. I don't know if he would return my calls, but uh appreciate it. But, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, you know, I, I did have a, like, what did you kind of learn last year being in that three-man uh, rotation, the center rotation with, uh, Marcus Gasol and, and a few others. Just uh, uh, what are you going to learn from being in that situation? Honestly, uh, just how to be a great teammate, man. Um, you know, I feel like earlier in my earlier years, when I, you know, would have got down that position, you know, I would have been upset. I would have been kind of trying to figure, you know, out who I can, you know, curse out to figure out why I wasn't on the floor, man. But um, I figured out how to be a great teammate and basically just really, you know, cheer on the guys that's who are on the floor, man, because at the end of the day, we all we, uh, reap those rewards, man. Um, I'm a competitive player. I think anybody um, in this game, in this nature, who, you know, plays this game or, or, you know, plays up basketball, wants to be out there on the floor, wants to be able to be a part to, you know, help the team will to get the W. But at sometimes, you know, those matchups or sometimes, you know, the night is it's just not your night, man. So, uh, honestly, man, it was just about locking in um, like I – like I was doing, man. I cheered my teammates on. I consistently stayed ready. I went out and did my work. Um, how I would do is if I was getting prepared to play a game, really, man. But 
really it was just making sure I stayed locked in. And I think um, it was basically um, you know, a mental thing. It was one of the things that you you really had to uh, improve on. I don't really think it's anything physical, but it's definitely one of those mental things when, you know, going from doing one thing and now, you know, you're, you know, just sitting there and you're watching. Really. Just following up on that real quick, sorry. Is there something that clicked for you in your career that made you okay mentally or made you like mentally strong enough to handle that? Uh, I mean, I've been around veteran players, man, who've been in this role, man. I've been around, I'm best friends with uh, Lou Williams, and this guy has uh, two shocking things in this league. I don't think he ever had a contract over $10 million, and he hasn't started for a team in this, uh, in this NBA. But he's won the six man of the year award, what, four times? And that just goes to show you, you can go on this team, and he could have been started for a lot of different players, uh, a lot of different teams. Um, he could have went and, you know, or there's own ticket to a lot of different places, man. But it's all about, um, you know, like I said, the process. Everybody's process is different, man. So just being around somebody like that um, early on in my career and just, you know, blessed to be able to be, you know, call myself a legitimate friend with him, man. You know, you can't ask for nothing better. So um, I had a great vet in him that, you know, taught me early on, you know, that this game is going to have a lot of ups and a lot of downs, um, you know, but just don't never let it get you too low. Thank you. Quentin. Welcome to DC Trust. How you doing? Thank you, bro. I'm doing good. Um, I got a couple questions for you. Number one, I've heard some stories about you in practice and just like how intense you are night, well, day in and day out, just kind of bringing that mentality to the practice uh, arena. What do you demand out of yourself when it comes to you to practice for the games? And also, what do you demand out of your teammates? Because when I look at you, you say you're not a vet, but you have been in the league for a pretty long time producing and I, I look at you beside guys like Rui and the younger guys who can look at you for their dog mentality and just to be more physical. What do you demand out of yourself and also teammates when you do practice? Um, I mean, honestly, I look at it really just like a game, man. I, I compete and, uh, you know, go at it just as hard as I would do um, if I was uh, on the court, really, man, because, I mean, you practice how you play, brother. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you can't go out here and uh, start to, you know, drag it or, you know, be like, <laughs> one fault, one fault. You good? Hey, coach. Oh, man, my man just fired. <laughs> um, but honestly, man, I you know really just uh, going to every situation, man. Looking at you know trying not let nobody outwork me. Really, I mean that's kind of what I built myself on in this league. Kind of what I kind of call my staple in this league. Um, just not really being outworked. I mean, so if I could really just try to pass that along, and you know those young guys kind of see that that I'm doing that, you know even year eight in, man, um, I think they're going to gravitate to it, man. I think they're going to see the the will and um, want to, you know, play harder, want to be able to work out harder, want to be able to stay in the gym and just be able to get out there. And, you know, once you have a whole team of people that's doing that, I mean, even though we're going to make mistakes because at the end of the day, we're still learning as a new group that, you know, those mistakes are going to be, um, you know, overshadowed by the hard work and, uh, uh, you know, determination and, you know, all the effort that we put in behind it, really. And just following you and just anyone who follows basketball has seen that you've been on tour this summer, just playing basketball all over the freaking country at this point. Yeah. I was in, when most players or some players shy away from summer basketball, you continue to go and push yourself and compete all over these different places. How important is it for you to continue to just stay on the floor and just improve your game? And also uh, the dribble package has improved. The shooting looks like it's improving as well. Just kind of talk about your off season focuses in the gym. Um, me, honestly, uh, I use those games as a, um, uh, as a dress rehearsal for everything that I've been doing throughout the week with my trainer, man. So all the ball handling, all the shooting drills that we're doing without, you know, nobody physically basically being there consistently over in an in-game setting. Now those are, you know, being carried over to an in-game setting. Um, and for me, man, you know, we're, we're blessed to be able to play this game. We're blessed to be able to be athletes every day and wake up and, you know, this is our job, you know, being able to go out here and lift our shoes up and play basketball. So, you know, the way I look at it, man, I try to stay around as much as I can, man. As far as vacation and stuff like that, man, I do that um, later on down the line, man. Once, you know, I, you know, have to stop bouncing the basketball, man. And that, that's all the days that we as athletes never look forward to, you know. So, but me, you know, now I'm looking at it in a different mindset because now, you know, those days I can't have look forward to because I never took a vacation. I never, you know, took a day off really, man. So, um, I mean, in this game, man, you can have, you know, a quick short span, man, that you can try to stretch it as long as you can, man. I'm trying to be one of those players that, you know, I hit my uh, 17, 18 season, man, and I'm still, you know, uh, you know, top shape, you know, um, and, you know, tip 
uh, you know, as far as athlete wise, performance shape, man. Cause you right. know, um, you know, it's gonna keep changing. It's gonna keep, you know, getting younger. It's a lot of different guys that's coming out at different stages, man. But I still wanna be, like I said, when it comes, you know, it's conversations and it comes to those talks, and I'm still here, you know, year 17, 18, you know, 19. Appreciate you, Trez. Once again, welcome to DC. Yes, sir. Thank you. Chase. Uh, yeah, Trez, you know, you mentioned um, where you grew up. Um, you, you're a lot closer than you've ever been uh, to where you grew up. And I, I know you went to high school in Virginia briefly. Um, it's still a bit of a drive, but what's it like uh, being closer and what do you expect to come from that? Oh, um, man, to be honest, man, it's not a drive at all, man. <laughs> when I came up to D.C., uh, my brother actually came down. I thought I did my physical and everything. Um, and then we actually uh, hit the road and came back to North Carolina, man. So it's like a little... Three hours spurt, man. So it's it's the district really about to be real heavy with my family. Um, I never really been this close uh, as far as playing wise in the city. Um, closest I you know can kind of say it's Houston, but like I said, they're still not even closer. So um, this is the closest I've ever been. Um, I know my family is definitely about to be in there real heavy uh, as far as like home games. Um, you know, it's I'm back on this uh, you know time side uh, as far as the East Coast, so I get to. Um, be tied in more with my kids. Um, my kids live in Atlanta. So, uh, man, I mean, it works out. It works out a lot, man. And I just can't wait to, you know, get ready to, um, you know, take a journey on the process and get ready to, you know, enjoy um, each day, really. Boy. Uh, what up, Trent? Uh Welcome to Chocolate City. Chase kind of uh, stepped in on the question that I was asking, but... Uh, how do you feel about somebody being a real North Carolina representative playing in D.C.? And I know you have to know about the connection between the Carolinas and D.C. and what it means to play in the city where not only are you representing the people, but the people also, when they walk around every day, they represent you. How does that make you feel as an NBA player? Um, I mean, really, it, it kind of is that that homegrown feeling, man. Um, you know, I'm from down south, uh, being out here from North Carolina, man. So, like I said, with you know, just being that, you know, little quick stretch up the road, um, I definitely think it's going to, you know, really basically play into the fact of, you know, basically just how I am as a person, man. I'm really uh, big on family uh, family loyalty um, and, you know, just hard work and dedication, man. I just feel like that's definitely something that that whole uh, D.C. area uh, represents, man, that whole district area is kind of built on just that whole you know, grit and determination, um, hardworking, and, you know, just overcoming all the obstacles that, you know, is faced in front of. All right, and then, Trance, I got to follow up with this. Uh, can you expand on your uh, knowledge about go-go music? Does anything that you got <laughs> for us? Uh, I know a little bit of it, man. Uh, I'm a big Wale fan. Uh, I mean, I'm a big music fan in general, man, so I definitely heard a lot of Wale uh, mixtapes early on when he was on that go-go stage. Um, but, you know, I'm not really um a huge fanatic on it like knowing it you know saying i can pinpoint what it sounds good with it um but i've heard a little bit of it man like i said i'm a wale fan so wale was definitely one that introduced that you know whole go-go to the uh rap side so uh, I'm, I'm gonna have to get a lot more hip to it though i see <laughs> i mean they'll have to get you out to some of the uh games at the arena where they play the capital city go-go but uh okay. hey welcome again to chocolate city my brother thank you sir Take the last question from Christos. Uh, hello, Montrezl. Christos Sellers from Greece. Hope you're doing well. How you doing? Thank Montrezl, you. What, how, how, how you vision your partnership with Bradley Bill on the floor uh, this season and what result will make you satisfied at the end? Um, I mean, honestly, I feel like Brad is a guy that can score at the multiple different levels, man. Um, you know, once the trade went through it, uh, I seen him where I was going, man. I instantly reached out to him probably a day or so after, and, you know, instantly started talking about, you know, the way that he likes um, the play, you know, what he, you know, feels is his best um, uh, way to get him open, man. Just asking him little questions to pick his brain, man, because like I said early on in the uh, press conference, man, he's going to be the head of our snake. He's going to be the guy that, that we look to as our leadership. Um, he's been a staple in this uh DC um, organization for a while, man. So we're definitely going to look to him as uh, being the head of, you know, uh, well, basically just continuing to be um, the head of the, uh, the snake. Uh, he's been, you know, multiple years for DC, really. So, like I said, just picking his brain, man, just kind of understanding how he kind of, you know, looks to score and wants things as far as, like, screening and, uh, you know, what he feels his sweet spots on the floor is. But 
I don't really feel like it's going to be hard because uh, Brad is just, you know, is a bucket, man. This guy has put up 50, you know, 60-plus nights, man, and, and you know, it's been only him, man. So, like I said, it's not as – I don't think it's going to be tough with a guy like that. And from your perspective, how good will going to be the Wizards this year? Hey, brother, I don't, I don't like to predetermine anything. I don't even predetermine, you know, stats or anything for myself, man. I feel like, um, you know, we're going to be as good as we – Um, you know, work to be really, man. As good as we going to the gym each day and, and with our mindset uh, each day coming in, that that's what's going to be our, um, you know, ceiling as to how good we could be, brother. Like I said, it's going to be a learning process for everybody. Um, everybody's going to have to, you know, take them one day at a time, blah, blah, blah. But like I said, we all come in with that right mindset to, um, you know, want to get better, look to get better, um, and, you know, work to get better. It can only, you know, be that that end result, really. So um, we're going to be as good as we we look to be, really. <laughs> so one day at a time, man, and we'll, we'll see how it goes um, as a team.